and there was a turbulence and they were so fearful of their life thinking they're going to die they called upon Jesus and Jesus too and he said he rebuked the wind from their behalf and the wind ceased but he said something said be still peace be still we want to pray Lord help me to be still let's stand up on our feet and let us pray O oh Lord of heaven, help me to be still. O oh Lord of heaven, help me to be still. O oh Lord of heaven, help me to be still. In the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord of heaven, help me to be still. O oh Lord of heaven, Oh Lord of heaven, help, help me, me to be still. still. In the name of Jesus. I trust in you. I have confidence in you. Oh Lord of heaven, help me to be still. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. The channel of Virgin, we are here tonight as part of the disciplines to minister and to be in your presence. Let the atmosphere switch right now. And let heaven take over earth. Silence every intruder from the feet of hell. And let your joy fill our heart in Jesus' mighty name. And at the end of it all, we have the God to, to glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Please take a seat. Talk Sunday. June 28th, week 3, and we are still in our month of I am peaceful in Christ in God. I am peaceful in Christ in God. And that's the structure from the book of Isaiah to 26, verse 3, Isaiah 26, verse 3, is said, hey, God, you will keep him in perfect peace, the one that trusts in you, whose mind stays on you because he trusts you. I just love this scripture. I found it from the popular book, uh, Purpose Driven Life. You need to go and read that book. Purpose Driven Life. I read it again. He said, You will keep him in perfect peace. Listen to the prophet. That God's responsibility, you don't tell God to heart on your behalf. He knows what to do. But we, most of the time, know what to do or we don't do it. Or we don't know it at all. He said, Hey, God will keep him in perfect peace. Why? The one that. Stay in you, and because what he trusts, so start the end is the beginning. He trusts in you, his mind stays on you, then God keep him in perfect peace. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, keep him in perfect peace this month. Oh Lord, keep me in perfect peace this month. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And we know our Sunday teaching series. And today is the third one that we are doing in a row is living in God's peacefulness. Hmm, I love that. I've said it before, like even this morning, every next level there is next devil. Don't think because you are promoted. The day that Joseph was promoted to Potiphar's wife in the realm of the spirit, that was when they unleashed the spirit of adultery and fornication against him. Because until he passed that test, he will never be trusted with the leadership, with the management in the prison. And until the prison test is passed, it will never see Pharaoh. So every next devil attracts what? Next devil. You have to know that. But regardless of the situation that you find yourself, regardless of how tense the environment, the situation, that, the things of life, let's, can somebody stay alive with me, please? How tense the situation of life is, I want you to know the Psalm 46, verse 10 is spe specifically written for you. What did he say? He said, be still. Somebody say, be still. Be still. Somebody say, be still. be still. Until you are still, <laughs> you will be still. I think that is what writing. Until you are still, you will be still. Because in the process of you going everywhere, you will lose your devil, and what happened? You will take you will, you want to take the place of God, and <laughs> you cannot take the place of God. 
Anytime you see that you are reacting negatively with the emotion, is growing up in wisdom is not there. When wisdom is not there, it's the function that the Spirit of God is not there. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nation. I will be exalted on the earth. Somebody shout hallelujah. Briefly today, I will be sharing with you possessing or following, let me call it, following simple instruction. Call on, be still. Following simple instruction. Be still. Be still. That's what I'm talking to you today. Just follow it. Be still. Because what happens, you can never be out of trouble. You know, the Bible said, during the time of Solomon, there was no war. But towards the end of his life, he messed up. What happened? What started? <laughs> you know, we have to read the Bible to the fullest if we want to get the best of it. Solomon, the Bible said, during his time, there was no war. Hey! But the same person, the same person, I mean the same person, was started when he missed it. I pray you will not miss it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. What am I talking about? In the midst of trouble. Know these two verses. Don't forget it. John 14, 27 and John 16, 33. It was in 2009, 8, 9 that the Lord gave it to me when I was, you know, come into the, you know, into the, the garden of believers. 1427 said, It's a peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. He says, Not as the word give. He said, I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Did you see that? The devil will not get you until first get you, get your heart. When your heart is distorted, your spirit will be fainted. And when the spirit faint, what happened? You remember Proverbs 24, verse 10. If you faint in the time of adversary, then what happened? Because your strength is what? Is little. I pray that God will give us strength. You remember the spirit of the man who sustain him is family. And a broken spirit, who can what? Who can bear? That means when your spirit is distorted, is troubled, then you will become vulnerable. Vulnerability. Your vulnerability is a function of your of the distorted spirit. And John chapter 16, verse 33, he said, This thing I speak to you, Jesus Christ was speaking to his disciples. He said, That in me, not in your boss, that in me, not in America, that in me, not in your president. What is going on in the round of world right now? Because people put their trust in man. And you all know the popular scripture. What is it again? He said, uh, people who trust in man, what, what um, book of the scripture is that again? Jeremiah chapter 17, I think verse 5 to 7. You put your trust in man, God said you, you, you will be around good, you will know there is good around you. Because man is, as we find the epistle, epistle reading, men will always display their littleness to you. Cause is the man who trusts in man. God is the man who trusts in man. God is the man who trusts in man. God is the man. You cannot trust in the in the in the in the policies of the of, of, you know in the standard of the policy. Really Jeremiah the seventeen verse five. Yes, that says the Lord. Yes, God is the man. God is the man who trusts in man. Who trusts in man? Make flesh his strength. Make flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord? Yes. For he shall be like a shrub mm. in the desert. Yes. And shall not see when the he good. He will comes. not see when good. Take it. That's a, that's alright. You will see that. Maybe these are the scriptures that you're supposed to understand as a believer. Cause is that man. Cause is that man. You will not be caused in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will not be caused in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will not be caused in the mighty name of Jesus. So the instruction is simple today. Be still. Know that you cannot get the best of any man. Your husband, no. Your father, no. Your mother, no. Your brother, your siblings, your, your colleague, no. Every man, I've come to understand, wherever you are expecting good from any man, these are the people that devil will use. When you make it to heaven, ask yourself. If you make it to heaven, ask, um, what is it called? Ask, um, Mordecai. Any time you are expecting good, if you make it to heaven, ask Daniel. Any time you are expecting good, 
evil will lock the door. Through the same people. But I pray for you, God shall save you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It's so simple. If God shall be still, Psalm 46, verse 10. If God shall be still, Mark 4 39. It simply means what? Be still. That's why I titled this following simple instruction Be still. Be still. You cannot take the place of God and hand up to God and, and not hand up to the devil. I love that. Thank you, Jesus. You cannot take the place of God and not end as devil. You cannot take the place of God and not end as devil. You cannot take the place of God and not end like devil. You cannot take the place of God and not end like devil. You cannot take the place of God and not end like devil. Your frustration in life is not on what people or how you are treated. Is how you take God away from the equation of your life. Your frustration in life, I hope somebody can write that. Your frustration in life is not how you are treated or how you are being limited, it's how you respond to the things of life. Somebody shout that again. It's so simple. Be still. Mark 4 39. Be still. Psalm 46, verse 10. There's a commandment. These are instructions. Let me tell you something about instructions that you need to know. Number one, instructions or instruction is either R or E. No matter how you are putting, you are putting S in it. Of course, it's R. But if you are not, it's E. But I'm going to use one word. Instruction is I way to distinction. You cannot get the best of life until you listen to the best of commandment or instruction. Number two, instruction. It's the pathway to greatness. You cannot be nervous until you do what is being told to you. Number three, instruction is the best place for your next level. Mm. Number four, instruction is the foundation for unlimited blessing. And number five, instruction is the gateway to the peace island of your enjoyment. There's an island that you enjoy. The gateway to that is instruction. That is the foundation for unlimited blessing. The gateway to it is instruction. Instruction is the best place for your next level. Instruction is the pathway to greatness. Instruction is the highway to distinction. You cannot be, you cannot live your life. You cannot be successful more than the instruction you are ready to adhere to. You cannot be successful more than instruction to you. To a head to somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What then is instruction? Instruction is in leading. When God instructs you, he leads you. Psalm 23. He leads me. He leads. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because he guides, he leads, he guides, and he leads. What is in leading? The leading of God guaranteeing the backing of God. God will never back the person that is not leading. When God gives you an instruction and you are held to it, it's backing, it's guaranteed. Number two, what is in God's leading? There is, when you follow God's leading, you compel God's support. The leading of God compels God's support. I love that. The leading of God compels God's support. The leading of God compels God's support. What is in God's leading? The leading of God invites God's capacity. You will never know what God can do for you until you begin to follow what God is saying to you. I love that. You will never know what God can do for you until you start following what God is saying to you, start doing it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it, don't to fight. You know, in the school of instruction, your suggestion is useless. We don't need your suggestion. Hey, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. I will start from the beginning again. I want somebody's mind here. The leading of God guaranteed God's backing. The leading of God compels God's support. Number three, the leading of God invites God's capability. Capability. And number four, the leading of God 
reveals God's power. When God instructs, when God guides, when God tells you what to do, God. The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 24, He said, faithful is he who has called you. Who himself will do it? To him that is able to do exceedingly. The God that is not a God of 99%. God is the minimum of 100%. He asks of Abraham to bring his son, his only son that he loves. Hey, but go ahead. There's a round waiting to replace it. God just wants you to know how much you love him. Do you love God? Then follow. The leading of God guarantees the backing of God. He compels God's support. He invites God's capability. He reveals God's power. And number five, the leading of God promotes God's intent. When God said go, when God wants to prove to Peter that, hey, you cannot sink following me. You cannot sink listening to my instruction. Then when Jesus says, hey, if you are the one, tell me to come. And he says, hey, come. When Peter was walking, Peter broke the law of physics by walking on water. And you know what happened? Because it was Jesus who gave him an instruction. He can never sink. You can never sink. You can never sink. You know, you need to understand this. That when God speaks, everything hears. In verse, is it verse 40 or verse 41 of that Mark 4? The Bible says, the people look at him, what, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and listen to me. Because what happened? The creator will always listen to its creator. I love that part. Thank you, Jesus. So what happened when you fail to listen to instruction? What am I talking about today? Be still. No matter the world that you are fighting, God is there for you. Guess what? He has won. You have been declared winner before you start fighting. That is why I said to you, when you follow, when you walk in the peace of God, you don't have competitor, and because you don't have competition. I love that part. <laughs> I love that part. Thank you, Jesus. So you need to understand that. You need to, in your marriage, you don't need to fight. When God says love your husband, he does not treat you right. Don't worry, just love him. Hey, in, in, in your workplace, you don't need to disrespect your boss. When God says, hey, just be lawyer. Don't worry, just be lawyer. And God that sees in secret will what I tell people today. Let me tell you something. Once you follow what God is saying, you will compel God to bring to bring to pass his word. God will not bring protocol for you. What am I talking about? If God said, when people tre treated you wrong, I think I read today. Let me read it again. Let's read it. Genesis 39, verse 32. 29 verse 31. I hope I get it. Genesis chapter 29 verse 31. So, I want you to know something. When God speaks to you, make sure we deal with it. When God saw that Leah was eaten, let's make sure he's writing that we're reading. Amen. Genesis 29, verse 31. Go ahead, please. When the Lord saw that Leah, when the Lord saw that Leah was, that Leah was eaten, pay attention. God saw it. There's something in, does Jacob really love Leah? No! No! God saw that the person that Jacob is not loving was eaten. What did God do? He opened a room. Take your seat. But the person that was liked by men, a womb was closed. Maybe you don't get what I'm trying to say. You like something, nothing about it. You just say you like this, you don't like this. Stuff. God said, because you ate something, he said the one that you ate will receive my blessing. Can I pray for you? And this is my prayer. Wherever you have been ate before, may God shock them by blessing you ahead of them. Amen. You don't know. That when you don't struggle, you are bringing God to take care of business on your behalf. I will say that, that again. If you refuse to struggle, just be calm. Don't go past yourself. Don't disrespect people. Anytime, anytime, I mean anytime that you align yourself with God's instruction, what happened? You have compelled God. When God saw that Leah was hated. When God saw, I wish somebody can get that. When God saw that your boss is not giving you promotion, despite you have done the work, 
God. When God saw that your husband treated you wrong, despite you showing love, when God saw that you have invested everything in the things of God and yet people have manipulated, when God saw until God sees it, you want to take the place of God. Let God see. That's the part that people don't wait for. Hebrews 16. It was a time people don't know. People thought, hey, this guy is a, uh, what is it called? Is a magician or is a very powerful person. No. There are so many times that I'm tired. There are so many times that I'm weary. But one thing that I do is that any time I don't understand that, what is going on around me, I try to understand the God who instructed me. Anytime I'm faced with a challenge that I cannot comprehend, that I cannot talk about, you know, people don't know. I, I, I tell people, who do you think that motivates the motivator? Who is the thing that pastor, pastor? Who is it that mentor, mentor? Who is it that inspires the inspirator? People don't know that until everybody has a secret place. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget that part. Let it be your, part, your scripture. 29 verse 31 of Genesis. When God saw. Let God see that they are treating you wrong. Let God see that they don't give you peace. Let God see. When God can see. The Bible says God that sees in secret. What he's going to do? He's going to reward you openly. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't forget. When God does speak to you to lead you up to your stillness. Don't worry, just follow what God is saying. I'm going to read those five things again for you to know that when this week, let God have the capacity. Let God have the priority over your decision. Don't go by your flesh. Romans 8, verse 7 to 8. You cannot please God and please your flesh at the same time. It is Kana. The enemy of the world is a friend of God. An enemy of God is a you have to You cannot have to master. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. The living of God guarantees God's backing, it compels God's support, it invites God's capability, it reveals God's power, and promotes God's intent. The, God, the intention of God is to bless you beyond measure, but you have to go by its living. What happens when you fail to be still? So your failure to be still is an invitation to doubt. Invitation to doubt. You will start the any time you doubt God is because you have failed in his instruction. There will never be Isaac. If Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3 is not being you know, compared with you know, obedience makes you to come alongside with God. Anytime you doubt there is God, you know, people tell me, I didn't know if there is still God. No, it's not. I don't know if you are truly a child of God. If you and your father have disagreement, or you and your father, uh, you, you, anytime maybe you ask your father for something and you have not done it yet, does that mean you doubt if it's your father? No, it's your father regardless. <laughs> If you and your wife, your wife have a misunderstanding, does that mean she's not your wife? She's still your wife. If your children are not doing what you want, does that mean they are not your children? They are still your children. But let me tell you something. Anytime you fail to be still, to follow simple instruction, what happens? You will doubt God. And when you doubt God, you will doubt your existence. That's why people don't plan to kill themselves. People kill themselves by themselves because what happens? They have no more hope. I tell people the statement of when there is life, there is hope. It's a wrong statement. I don't know where it came from. Tell me about what it is. It's a lie. There are many people who have too many lives and they don't have hope. It's a, when God told me, He said, No, tell them it is where there is hope, there is life. Hope is a fuel, fuel that, that makes the car of your life to keep going. When people don't have hope again, life becomes useless. When people don't have hope again, their connection becomes disconnected from God. When people don't have hope again, their future, their vision becomes blurry. When people don't have a hope again, their motivation level goes down. Their inspiration level goes down. When people don't have hope again, 
there is no more capacity to keep going. Therefore, hope is the mother of them all. Hope is the mother of them all. Hope is the mother of them all. So, if you don't want to lose your hope, keep your connection with heaven. So, your failure to be still is an invitation to doubt. Number two, your failure to be still is an invitation to frustration. Number three, your failure to be still is an introduction to devastation. And number four, your failure to be still is an embracement of shame. I'll start from one again. Your failure to be still is an invitation to doubt. I take that again. It's an initiation to doubt. You are initiation into doubt and the death process. Number two, your failure to be still in an, is an invitation to frustration. The first one, initiation into doubt. The second one, invitation to frustration. The third one, introduction to devastation. The fourth one is an embracement of shame. And the fourth one, your failure to be still is an open door into unlimited limitation. <laughs> Unlimited limitation. There are many things that you can do. When you doubt God, you will never have capacity. I dare run out. Anytime people don't know what to do, ask them because they're not following God. The Bible said Jesus himself knew what to do. Why? He always knew what to do. Bishop Meneko said something a long time ago. He said, There will never be a time where I will not know what to do again. He said, there will never be a time that we cast my head down. Now thinking, no, there will never be a time. There will never, as a child of God, there is only spirit. Jesus Christ said, hey, I cannot leave you an orphan. I will give you the spirit of truth. So any time you don't know what to do, it's because you have switched off the connection, the light of Holy Spirit. What do I do? What do I say? Can I go? You know, this are the it. And the prompting of God that makes you to what? To be, to, to be still. But all days are a function of your instruction. You cannot go past God. Let God go ahead of you. So he's going to take care of you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Let me round up tonight with just two things to do to be still. Two things. Number one, don't fight your battle. Mm. That is tough. Stop fighting your battle. Stop fighting your battle. Stop fighting your battle. You cannot erase God and expect his intervention at the same time. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. You cannot erase God and expect his impartation and intervention at the same time. Until you allow God to be the, 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 your bridge, God will never give you your promotion. Until God drops in your boat, He will never give you promotion to your next level. Don't fight why God is there. It brings, it brings, it embarrasses the person of God. Don't talk back when God has instructed you. It means you are telling God to shut up. Don't fight God. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, he said, The Lord shall fight for you. The Lord shall fight for you. The Lord shall fight for you. Why? But you must hold your peace. That means you must be still. So when you invite God, truly invite God. I will say that again. When you invite God, truly invite Him. Let him know that God take care of everything. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Bishop Elipo wrote a book long time ago. He said, all you need to have all your needs met. You cannot take the place of God and you want God to fight for you. If you want to follow instruction, if you want to follow the instruction of be still, number one, don't fight your battle. Exodus 14, 14. And number two, as I round up tonight, is wait on God. You cannot, you cannot, I mean you cannot, you cannot, I'll say it again, you cannot 
You cannot. You cannot go ahead of God and expect God to come behind you. God is a man of battle. He leads war. And when he leads the war, he wants to be in charge. Psalm 27 verse 14, Psalm 27 verse 14, the last verse, Psalm 27, he said, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. God is not your mate. That you time. He said, God, by 10 minutes to 10, I'm done. The devil said, go now. One day, Apostle John Suleiman was preaching and somebody came to him and said, Papa, please tell God, if God did not give me your husband, by next month, I'm done. I'm not coming to church again. Help me to ask God. Apostle Suleiman said, no, God just spoke to me. He said, what is God? He said, God said, go. I will not give you your husband. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You cannot thank God. God is not your father. What I mean by student of biological father, that you hey, you're going to be on the same level. No, let, me, let me take that away. But I mean, God is not your mate. Let me put it out to justify what I'm trying to say. Somebody says, God is not your father. No, God is your father. But sometimes, you cannot place God side by side with the people that you can talk to determine, to manipulate. And go, you cannot manipulate God. He has said everything long before. Go and read Jeremiah chapter 1 and see how God told Jeremiah. He said, hey! In your, before you get to your mother's womb, I knew you. God knows what you want to go through. And the one thing I want you to know, God will first lead you about before he leads you into where you are going. God will give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Wait on God. Wait on God. We have popular scriptures as in Psalm 40, verse 30 to 31. Psalm 40, verse 30 to 31. Is that even the youth shall faint? People who know. He said they, they will fail and be weary. People who have capacity. He said the young men shall be utterly failed. But in verse 31, the but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be stand up on your feet. Those who wait, they that wait. Don't fight your battle and wait on God. Don't fight. And why do you don't fight? Don't say, God, if you don't fight in the next one minute, I'm going to start up and start abusing people. No, just wait. Those two things are the sign that you truly want to follow the simple instruction of what? Of this. Thing. Stand up on your feet and lift up your head. You say, God, empower me to follow the instruction. I will not fight my battle and I will wait on you. I will not fight my battle and I will wait on you. I will not fight my battle and I will wait on you. Open your mouth and pray, everybody. I will not fight my battle and I will wait on you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want you to know tonight, every time, as far as I know, I've been preaching twice a day on Sunday, sometimes once, but most of the time, be twice. I don't know where I get the energy from, but I know when the Lord said, This is what you're going to do. I've been doing it. Be still. It's a function of what? Following simple instruction. If you are here and you have been fighting God, God tells you to do something, no. God tells you to support somebody, but no. God tells you to give to somebody, but say no. God says, hey, respect your husband. He say no. God says, hey, love your wife. He say no. You cannot be, I want everybody to be on their feet. You cannot be doing things on your own terms and expecting God to fulfill his term. I will say it again. You cannot be doing things on your own terms and you expect God to what? To fulfill his own terms. Somebody shout out yeah, So wherever you are around the world, you want to give your life to Christ, all you need to do is to lift up your hand, left hand up, and put your right hand on your chest and say this after me, Lord Jesus. I'm all yours. I know that you died for me and on the third day, you rose up again. That I might be justified right now. My sins are forgiven. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right now, I will follow your instruction. I will not do it by myself again. In Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has prayed that prayer, may the hand of God be upon you. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. It's communion time. The only thing that can make you to follow instructions. Apostle John chapter 5, verse 30. 
John 5 30. That is the secret. Why do we take communion? We take communion to be able to align ourselves with the person of Jesus. If Jesus says something in verse 30 of John, I can of, myself do I can of my own do nothing. As I hear, as I, hear I judge. I judge. My judgment, my judgment is, is just. Because, because I, do not seek I did not seek my own will, but, but the will of the Father who has sent me. Jesus said he will not attempt anything by himself. Why? Because he has the Spirit of God. That's why he said, as my father has sent me, even so sent I you. He said, whereby eat my flesh and give my love. We live by me as I live by the Father. By this communion, you will not do anything by yourself again. You will be living on instruction of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Jesus. Name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is often time. The best in time. It is often time. The best in time. If you have been led today to be part of what God is doing here, and you want to give the email to Zell and uh, what is it called? Paper. And uh, paper. And paper is right there. So let us give. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 14. That never be compelled, rather be led. Father, because we are not here empty by your word, let this offering be our offering of our follow of our following instruction offering. By this offering, we shall be still and wait on you to fight our battle and wait on you to reveal yourself in our situation. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. As many who are giving today, let this be a seed. Of unlimited capacity to follow God's instruction in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Lift up your hand and receive the blessing. Father, you have helped us to come this far. I pray in the mighty name of us, many people who are focused. During this time, as many people who will listen to this or who do not listen to it later, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you empower them with the spirit of followership. The spirit that will make them to be still, to have the peace of God. The spirit that will make them to live in peace at all times, in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit to follow your leading, your instruction, and to for them to have your backing in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Say so surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Divine space is my portion. It's God on my side. 2021 shall produce for me on the grand result. Congratulations. Amen. Amen. Give somebody an advice, I will follow instructions.